Good afternoon. Uh, thank you for joining uh, our first Austin-focused National Drive Electric Week session. I am Aaron Choate, the coordinator for Austin EV, the Austin chapter of the Electric Auto Association. And today we're going to be talking with Amy Ashley and Bobby Gutsy from the Austin Energy Emerging Tech team. They have prepared a bit of a presentation to get us started, and then we'll discuss their work here in Austin. Uh, and finally, we'll open the floor for your questions. Um, Amy and Bobby are fine with you going ahead and unmuting yourself and asking your questions um, as they come up. So please feel free to do so. Um, and uh, we'll also have some additional time at the end, ideally uh, for a focused question and answer session as well. So with that, um, Amy and Bobby, do you wanna go ahead and get started? Yeah. Absolutely. So, uh, my name is Bobby Gotzi, and Amy and I are going to present to you guys today just kind of everything that's been going on in Austin, uh, transportation, electrification uh, of all sorts. And uh, some of you guys on this uh, call today know Amy and I, so uh, we thought it would be better if we just kind of, we're going to present and show you many different things and, and update you all on, on everything that we've been doing this year and kind of what the future looks like, uh, foreseeable future looks like. But uh, we, we talked to Aaron about just if you guys want to interact, if you see something on a slide that interests you and you have a comment about it, uh, just unmute yourself and speak up and, and we'll talk. Uh, you guys know us uh, and, and so feel free to chime in on, on any slide or anything that you want to. And then also at the end, we'll just do kind of a round table and talk. Uh, with that, I will show you, uh, you guys know about our electric greater than gas t-shirts. So, uh, if you do have a good question today, and Aaron de de uh, deems it a good question, uh, I will send out the coolest new uh, electric greater than gas. It's a hat from Austin Energy, uh, but this just is hot off the press, so you guys got to uh, got to get one of these. So, uh, with that, we'll get started. Uh, Amy, you want to go ahead and introduce yourself? Yeah. Um, hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Amy Ashley from Boston Energy, Electric Vehicles and Emerging Technologies, um, Senior Project Lead um, with my focus on bringing frameworks of equity, environmental justice to historically underserved um, communities. Bobby, are you going to introduce yourself? Yeah, sorry. Your role. Uh, it cut out just a second. Uh, my name is Bobby Gotzi, and I work at Austin Energy and Electric Vehicle and Emerging Technologies Program. Uh, I support Amy and, and all of her projects and what she's going to be talking about today. She also supports me and all the stuff that I work on. My focus, uh, as many, many of you know, is uh, outreach and education in the community uh, and then special projects like Electric Drive, um, the auto dealership initiative that we'll talk about today, and some of those other things that are more geared toward the community and, and uh, educating the community. Um, and then I also focus on uh, multifamily units and things like that to try to help commercial properties uh, get uh, installed infrastructure. So uh, with that said, uh, as you see this beautiful Austin skyline, uh, we thought we'd kind of give you uh, the state of affairs this year. We know it's been a tough year for all of us. Uh, and Amy wanted to kind of explain what's going on at Austin Energy during this time. Yeah, thanks, Bobby. Um, so we, yeah, we kind of wanted to just level set with you since we're in sort of this really strange um, time and trying to, all of us are trying to pivot and, and try to understand how to proceed with all the wonderful plans that we had in progress and we're um, hoping to, uh, you know, make happen. So just to give you a little perspective, um, as you know, Austin Energy, we're a publicly owned utility. Um, and so for um, basically, essentially, we are a city department. Um, and so the city has been really focused, obviously, on the global pandemic and how it's affecting our community here and also the um, social and racial crisis that has occurred and um, how we can, you know, kind of pa uh, pave a, a path forward uh, for inclusion. Um, the city of Austin is um, giving um, $10 million in assistance to individuals, those in need. There's been um, a, com a whole, you know, group of people that have been uh, putting together that grant process to um, support people who are out of work, to support people who are struggling to make ends meet, um, to support people who have gotten sick, 
um, and just to um, assist as we are having a fragile um, economic um, environment. So um, as far as Austin Energy, um, you know, one of the things that we're so community involved, um, one of the main things that we've done um, with COVID is to ensure that those people have in our community do not have the lights turned off. Um, those who um, had been delinquent and their accounts were closed, we have opened those up. Um, we have um, created um, a deeper um, bill assistance incentives um, to help people along so that we can contribute uh, to um, the quality and health and wellness of all of our citizens as well as um, just continue to keep things going here um, economically in the city of Austin. So it's really had all of us and in, in whatever department we're on really shifting our focus and ensuring that everything that we do is sort of leading with those things in mind in this current time. We have a staff member uh, that is a key um, member to um, helping internal um, assisting um, our COVID response. We have a lot of um, employees who are, you know, we're all, in, I guess, um, considered essential employees because, you know, we are energy providers, but there are individuals that still are going in every day and haven't stopped doing that because they basically have to keep those lights on and keep your char your cars charged. So um, there's been a lot of um, safety protocols put in place, even just, you know, how to get people food if they're going to be basically staying there. And a lot of people are camping out um, and, and sacrificing to do that. So it's just kind of giving you a little inside scoop and, and getting deeper into um, more granular into what we're doing with the electric vehicle program, Emerging Technologies. Um, you know, we'll talk a little bit about some of the programs we've been working on and having some great momentum and how we've had to sort of pull back a little bit um, and allow, you know, the messaging that we're putting forth to be centered around, um, around COVID and around the health of uh, social justice um, in our city. So um, with that said, um, we're going to go ahead and go through this. We have some very positive uh, stories to tell you on our response to this and also just the way that we've been able to um, continue to keep some of those programs going, deployment of infrastructure, um, and just continuing to support the, the, um, the sales and education, educational piece of electric vehicles. So um, from there, I'll throw it right back to Bobby. Yeah, and so I think uh, one of the highlights Amy said there that I think it's important for this group to know, because uh, you guys uh, are kind of the, uh, the, a lot of you are the early adopters. And, and so the messaging for Austin Energy has been focused, uh, like Amy said, on, uh, you know, the community and, 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 and not, we didn't want to send out mixed messages. So we held back on some of the messaging that we've been working on with the electric vehicle program, some of the green building, green choice programs, green building programs, and some of the other things, and just focused on uh, community efforts and how can we help you keep the lights on? How can we help you uh, manage your electric bills right now? So that's why you guys haven't heard a lot of us. We've still been on Facebook, but we've kind of pulled back in some of the other areas. But just, just for the messaging parts of it, we've been doing a lot of great things behind the scenes. So we'll start to share some of those things. You guys know on this, uh, you know about our goals, uh, you know, we want to be 100% carbon free uh, by, by 2035. We want to be net zero emissions uh, by 2050. And I think we're adjusting those goals, if that's correct, Amy. Is that right? I think you're on mute. Um, yes, it's, it's um, right now it's a work in progress. We're, we're tracking really well so we're able to um, kind of we think we're going to meet these goals sooner uh, rather than later but this is basically a broad um, kind of view of um, you know what we're what we're tracking towards and you will be seeing updates as we go yeah um, so and then today we'll talk we're gonna talk about kind of our strategy and vision with you guys but uh, you know how many EVs are in the, in the area right now already driving around uh, how much charging is being done in our area. And you guys know that we focus on sustainable affordability and livability in Austin and try to improve all those areas. Uh, and then uh, where we go from here, how the city kind of is doing a great job in our opinion, as far as uh, allowing us to, to, to kind of advance the programs and, and they really support us 
uh, when we go to council with, uh, with ideas and thoughts, and we'll share some of those with y'all today as well. Um, and then I don't know if you, you all have been online yet, but we do have a smart mobility roadmap. And Amy was a, a, a part of that, uh, but that is online, if I'm correct, Amy, is that right? Yeah, it's online. Um, it, it was online for a time for public comment, and I think now it's been wrapped up. Um, but it's a really cool document, um, and it, it was cross-departmental with other city um, departments. And our role really was to um, inform on um, sort of incorporating three technologies, which is um, shared electric and autonomous. Yeah. And then also, how do we reach the entire community with this technology that we're reaching towards, um, you know, to make sure that it's, it's an equitable uh, deployment. And so we had, we talked a lot about affordability and about opportunities uh, for employment, uh, ladders of opportunity, um, as well as um, just pushing this, this technology forward. So it was really great to have um, uh, the support of the city to, um, put a document out here like this that we're all looking to as sort of our roadmap. Um, George, were you raising your hand? Oh, okay. No. Okay. No, nothing yet. Okay, the hat's still here. All right, so you guys know about, also I, I wanted to, just this overview of the programs. So you know about the Plug In Everywhere program, the $4.17 a month gives you unlimited access to over a thousand charging ports all over Austin. Uh, all those are powered by 100% renewable West Texas wind. So you, you all ask us, we get asked this a lot. Well, is my car, you know, running on clean energy? Uh, am I, am I, you know, and so confidently you can say every time I use a plug-in everywhere uh, charging station, it is 100% renewable energy. Um, and then we're going to talk to you today about our fast charging rollout that we've done in the, in the last few months. And the pricing that we've set up for that, this is brand new and you, you all will get some messaging on it in the next couple of weeks. Uh, but the, the new rate's gonna be 21 cents a minute uh, and that's plug in to plug out. And we'll talk about that in more depth so you guys can understand it a little better. Um, and then the rebates are still, still in place uh, and, and people have continued to use them. You'll be surprised to hear some information about there's still EVs being purchased uh, so we're really excited about that. The program seems to be going strong. Uh, we, we still have the up to $1,200 rebate for home level two charging infrastructure. We still have the, up to $4,000 rebate for commercial level two stations. And we also have this fast charging uh, up to $10,000 rebate. Um, but as you know, it's expensive to, uh, to put a fast charger in the ground. Uh, so that 10,000 is not quite a, a, a mover when it, when it comes to the needle. Uh, but we're trying to, to, to offer up something. Uh, and then our EV360 pilot is, is still, we're still working out the, the, the last bit of kinks to that, but it, it has been successful. I think some of you on this program today have that EV360, uh, which, is, which is basically, uh, we kind of a, call it an a all-inclusive package where you can charge at over all those charging ports publicly. You can also charge at your house. Uh, during off-peak times and then all day on the weekends. And it's only, I think it's around $30 a month. So it's a fixed cost. What we're excited about is offering that up to, to new drivers. And we're going to adjust the, the pricing a bit uh, because we know it doesn't work with some of the people here and, and, it, and it, it wasn't quite a, a, a needle mover. But the goal there is to, to be able to tell people that you have a, you'll know what your fuel costs are going to be each month, you know, and, and you're also at the same time you're helping us uh, by charging during off-peak time. So it's kind of a behavioral shift, uh, similar to those smart thermostats that, that, that many of you have at your home. And then uh, our e-ride program is, is, is booming because uh, as people stopped using the, the, the Capital Metro during the, the COVID crisis and, and trying to figure out other ways to get around the city, um, the, the e-ride program saw a boost in our, in our, uh, in our rebates uh, and we offer up to $400 on electric bikes, and electric scooters and things like that. So uh, keep that in mind if you're interested in, in trying to get an e-bike. And, um, and then we have our EVs for everyone programs that, that Amy's gonna touch on more today, uh, and, and which includes EVs for schools, which we're excited to share about with y'all as well. Um, but first I was gonna give you some information real quick. 
uh, kind of an update on kind of what we've been feeling in the community and, and, and throughout the throughout the world. Uh, Carl Popham, you know, our manager is heavily involved with many different organizations. Uh, and if you're not friends with him on LinkedIn, you got to be because he, he gives out a lot of good information. Uh, but this is a conversation we, we're, we're, we're hearing. It's, it's no longer when or, or if it's going to happen, but, but how soon it's going to happen. As you can see, these, these uh, gas companies like Exxon and, and, and BP and, and OPEC, and uh, as 2016, just a few years ago, they were saying, oh, there's going to be maybe 100 million on the road by 2040. And this is worldwide, of course. And, uh, but now they're, each year, their, their uh, projections have gone up and up and up. And so now you see that they've, they've skyrocketed. Everybody's, so everybody now realizes it's, it's, not a, uh, it's not a fad. It's not a, just a trend. It's, it's actually the real deal. So, and that's kudos to all you early adopters as well. Um, and then here in Austin, we're doing, we're doing well. Uh, obviously, we want to see it improve, and that's why we came out with some new things that we'll show you here later on in the, in the presentation. But right now, this is, I think, um, last quarter, so this, is, this, this number is higher now, but 11,451 registrations of EVs in our community. And, and as you see, the, uh, the hybrid that used to be more popular, uh, you, you see that the, 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 the fully electric vehicle is now... Uh, really the main purchase from people in our community. Uh, so we thought that was kind of interesting for y'all to see. Uh, and Amy, jump in any time. I'm just, I'm just updating on the notes here, but up, uh, jump in if you have any other thing to add to that. I, I will I will say, Bobby, what I'm doing while you're talking a little bit is I'm, I'm following the chat and trying to answer um, what I can. If it's something that's not really a very quick answer, let's bring it up, um, bring your question up when we go to the Q and A, or if you want to interrupt here, um, we can we can do that as well. Um, so yeah, yeah, yes. definitely interrupt you, you guys, and you if you want to talk about any of this. Um, this is a cool. As you see, um, the EV growth for one one particular model uh, just shot up in our in our market and in a lot of people's markets throughout the country, uh, which was the Tesla when the Model Three came on. Um, and but it, but what what we think it tells us is you know once the truck gets uh, gets out there in the market you know Rivian uh, when they come to market and some of the it, it, when they just expand what these EVs look like uh, there's a lot of people out there that that just aren't ready to go EV yet the price is right for them now the prices have come down because of battery prices and things like that but. It, it, it's still not it's still not the sexy model that they want right so some people have waited and waited uh i had a conversation with somebody recently and i said they're like oh it's a no-brainer I, I would get an ev tomorrow and i said well why don't you get an ev tomorrow you know why don't you trade in your car and get an ev and they said well because they don't have uh a, the truck i want the big the big uh the big truck i want and so they're just waiting they said as soon as it comes out as soon as their model comes out they'll, they'll buy it so uh, but, but Model 3 was an example of what happens in your market when an exciting vehicle that, that's popular and, 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 a, and a, looks good and affordable to people, what happens. So we thought that was really interesting to see this spike in our own community. Uh, and then just, we thought this was interesting for you all to see, the charging eco, ecosystem in Austin is, is varied, right? We have fast charging, we have level two, but most people want to charge at home. 84% of the charging happens at home in our community. So we thought that was interesting to share with you all. You know, you as a driver, you're probably one of these people who prefer to charge at home. But it's important to have this infrastructure in place at commercial properties and multifamily, where people live in multifamily, uh, to give those options. Uh, and then the fast charging infrastructure that we'll talk about later is very important too. Um, but we just found this really interesting. We wanted to share with you all. Yeah, and there's one thing to interject here. So, yeah. you know, uh, what we're, what our work is really, we're trying to bring this technology to to mainstream to everyday people. In order to do that, we're going to have to take that number of 84% of charging happening at home. We're going to need to shift that number because 
we've got to bring infrastructure that's available to people that live in multifamily. We have over 40 and it's probably getting close more to like 50% of Austin's population um, that lives in multifamily housing. We're simply not going to go electric until we have that infrastructure and we've been working to expand that. Bobby's had a program going um, for a couple of years now, maybe several years. Um, but it is, it is one of our top aggressive um, programs. Um, we are also installing an affordable housing. We've got several with foundation communities, um, one at LifeWorks. And um, of course, you know, we're, we're trying to be in all the public places where people are, where they shop, they work, live, and play. And then this is redundant for y'all, but uh, you know, the level one at home is, is perfectly capable for a lot of people. We're finding that people aren't even going with the level two charger at home anymore uh, because they'll just plug in and get their 35 or 40 hours, or 40, 40 miles to get back and forth to work. Uh, but th level two obviously is an option at home and then our fast chargers that are coming online. Um, I, I will tell you an interesting story and it's from uh, one of our, our uh, uh, Austin EV drivers. Uh, I was having a conversation with them probably about a year ago and they, I said, you know, how, how long does it take you to charge your leaf? And uh, they said, oh, it takes me about five minutes. And I said, what do you, what do you mean? It, it, <laughs> what do you mean it only takes you five minutes? And so he said, he said, well, I pull into my garage. I get out of my car. I take my plug and I plug it into the wall. It takes me a minute or two. I go in the house. I have my beer, have dinner, watch a little football, go to bed. I come back, I unplug the plug. It takes me a couple minutes maybe and I get in the car and I drive away. So it's about five minutes. And I laughed at that, but it stuck in my mind because that's how easy it is. And that's what people don't understand about, uh, you know, charging electric vehicles and how simple it is. And we make the reference a lot that it's like charging, just think of it like charging your cell phone, you know, at home, you just plug in your cell phone, you forget about it. The same thing with your car, you plug it in and you forget about it. So I thought that was a funny story. It's probably from one of y'all here. Uh, just real quick, you guys know about our public uh, charging infrastructure. We're over 1,000 uh, ports now, but the exciting news is we've added about 25 fast chargers throughout the community. Um, and this is from a TCEQ grant that we were awarded about 18 months ago, 15 months ago. And uh, even though COVID struck and, and we've had a lot of things happen this year to us, we were able to complete that, uh, that grant award that we won and did it, do it on time and, and, and uh, do it within budget. So uh, we're really excited about rolling this out to everybody. Um, the map on our website has been updated to include the fast chargers, uh, but they're in clusters uh, and throughout the community. Electric Drive, if you haven't been to Electric Drive recently, we've added, I think we're gonna have a total of 10 there uh, but it's a whole, it's, it looks, it's, it's a beautiful looking street. It's even better than ever. So go down there and take a look at it. Uh, and then Amy has added one to, uh, Austin high right there where you can, uh, plug in and, and, you know, take a walk around town lake or, or, uh, jog around town lake. So that's an exciting one. And there's a few other ones throughout the city. Uh, but go to, go to our website, plug and check out those those. Do anybody have any questions on the fast charging at all? I had Bobby, one, I, Bobby. Go ahead. Yeah. I noticed that you guys recently launched the one out at the airport, and I was curious if, you get, if you've seen um, an increase in use of that one. Well, so we, okay, so we launched these, or we, we installed them, but uh, Aaron, if you quite honest with you, they set their, um, uh, not activated for a bit okay. because we're having a little bit of an issue with the activation process with charge point, but we have since activated it. So I don't have that number for you on it. We don't have any information on, on how they're being used uh, yet, but, uh, but it's something that you guys can, you, you're, you can always email me too, Aaron, but I don't have an answer for you publicly right now because it just probably went live. I, I think it just got activated like two, two or three weeks ago, I want to say, but maybe it's been yeah. a little in that now but uh so we don't i don't i don't we don't really have i think those are quarterly numbers that we come up with anyway amy did you have anything else on that sorry i, I had a couple of things on that 
there I am. I had a couple of things on that. Um, DC fast charging. Now I lost my train of thought because I'm, I'm in the chat. Um, oh, okay. I'm sorry. It's going to have to, it, I'll have to revisit it. But, so, so I'll tell you guys, we, we try to, um, so this is going to come out in the next week or two, but, but basically we change. So the plug-in everywhere program is all our level two charging ports. We're going to have a fat of basically plug-in fast program for our charging, uh, fast charging stations. It's going to be 21 cents a minute plug in to plug out. And people ask us, why is that? But all the research that's been going on in with Tesla's and, and other uh, communities with fast chargers is people sit there and they'll plug in and they'll sit there for four hours or five hours or three hours. And that's what the level two is for. So when you want to use our uh, fast charging infrastructure, you want to plug in and plug out. So you want to be there for 30 minutes and, 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 and you know, top off or get your, get to 80% and unplug and go, you know, and really it's, it's set up in corridors really, really like the, that, like at the airport for, for those TNC drivers, you know, Ubers and Lyfts and, uh, and then the delivery drivers that are all over Austin. We want to encourage those folks to go electric. Um, and then also when you come in from another community, say you come in from Dallas or you come in from Houston or Austin, now that you can reach each city because you have a 250 mile range from your, from your battery, that we want you to be able to stop when you get into town at a fast charger conveniently located on the highway or right off the highway and, and, and fill up. So that's why, that's why we strategically placed them. And TCEQ, that was part of the grant process, was we had to agree to do it within one mile of a, cord, a major corridor. So that's another reason why you'll see these original ones put in, in certain locations. We get a lot of people asking us, why, why'd you put them there? So these are the reasons why we put them there. That thank you, Bobby. That's exactly what I was going to say is about that access and, and how we're really working um, with inner city connectivity. So we want to connect to San Antonio. We want to connect to Dallas and, and to Houston, Galveston. And, and to do that, we really do need to have these placed right along um, the freeway. It, it mirrors the behavior that we've, you know, known for all these years with transportation is, you know, we need, if, if we're going, you know, from one city to the next, traveling this big, great state of Texas, you know, you want to be able to get that charging right off the side of the road. You really don't want to have to pull into, you know, um, a shopping center that's, you know, about 10 minutes off your route. So um, it's it's really, you know, it's been a great uh, program to help promote that and also to support those high mileage vehicles. Um, and I did want to bring up, Bobby, something that was in the chat that I thought maybe others would like to, to hear about that was more or less something that could be answered in, instead of not a quick answer, but more elaboration. Um, and Joel asks, um, I'm surprised Bobby downplayed the importance trend to faster charging even at home. Seems to me that level two charger would be normal, not on the decline. Do you want to respond, Bobby? I can help as well. Yeah, no, I, 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 we're, I personally am a little surprised by that myself, but those are the numbers, Joel. It's, it's um, we've seen, uh, the level two rebates and, and people saying that they, they, they don't need the level two charger at home and they're just going to plug in on their, they're going to use their wall outlet. Um, quite frankly, I don't know if it's a national trend, but I heard, I've heard other, other communities talking about like fourth. I know you, a, lot of, a lot of you all know fourth up in Portland, uh, but they've said similar things. Um, you know, I don't, I don't know that I have uh, all the scientific data for you, Joel, but but that's the trend we're seeing. Amy, you can elaborate on that if you want to add anything. Yeah, no, I think it, it, it's a trend and that's what we do is we monitor to see what, what people are doing and we listen to what customers want. Um, and I think, you know, there is an element of, around energy distribution and, and um, you know, resilience and reliability. And um, that, that overnight trickle charge is, is, the, is the best case scenario on, on the grid when we really are deployed with, you know, thousands of EVs in, in Austin, we really want to see that be the norm behavior. But um, sure, I mean, when you want to go quick, um, you know, maybe you're not at home, um, you know, overnight. So, um, and that's why we're just trying to put that charging where people are, that level two charging where people are, um, so that, you know, again, you can, can top off um, as needed. Hey, Joel, is Joel local? Joel, we're going to send you one of these. So you got to get us uh, address information. Um, all right, so 
on a, on also something very interesting you guys would want to know is that see that last, see this fast charger on the screen here that's on electric drive that was the only one on electric drive one of the only ones in austin per the data from charge point that was the most used charging station in the state of texas wow. um but now we have 10 down there now we'll have 10 down there at the end of it so it'll be really cool and it's finally electric drive uh, real quick, I'm gonna run through this because we want to get to the programs. I know we're running out of time, or we're halfway through the the, uh, the session, but uh, here's just kind of the growth, just to kind of let you see it. I thought it was kind of cool to actually see 2011 with the when when Plug In Everywhere first began. Uh, there's the charging infrastructure, if you can see on the screen, and I'll just kind of scroll through and let you see how it grew. Here's 2012. It, it starts to look kind of like the uh, AT and T covering all the <laughs> United States. Um, Here's 2014, it's a little more, but then it starts to really pick up. And you can, you can see it starts to get all around Austin, not just the downtown area. Uh, and then it starts to get really uh, clustered in certain spots, like up north there, probably the domain area. Uh, 2017 and in 2018. Um, you know, we just have, we, we have one of the better uh, charging infrastructures uh, communities in the state of Texas. I mean, it's in the United States. Um, you know, we, we still need more in multifamily and things like that. We're still not satisfied because we prefer to have them on every corner, but uh, our infrastructure is good enough to get the community out there to, to think about electric vehicles. Um, so Amy talked about this a little bit, but our multifamily, we have them in about 65 or 70 locations right now. So we're really making progress with the multifamily communities. Um, but as she said, there's, you know, there's a 40% of the population that's in multifamily. So in order to, to, uh, to have EVs and adoption increase where we want it, we have to get multifamilies to have, uh, charging options for the communities. Um, oh, this is electric drive. Actually, this is electric drive. What it looks like today. Um, as you see, we've added space there where it used to be a problem. If you went down there to charge, uh, Remember the, remember the kind of confusion of the level two sitting there and the, the, the uh, ADA accessible. We fixed all those problems and, and, and a lot. That, that was a learning experience for us. And you guys helped us with this a lot uh, through your suggestions and concerns and uh, uh, acknowledgement of what was going wrong down there. So we fixed that. So go down there and check it out. Um, <laughs> Some of you know Shims on our team. Shims was project lead on this whole uh, fast charging infrastructure. And as you can see the paint jobs that we've done, we're really excited about. We made it very clear, this is for an electric vehicle only. You know, we have it, we, we have it really set up nicely, we think. Uh, but Shims, even during COVID was out and about, as you see, she's got her mask on, uh, she's got her protective gear on, but she had the, pro the project had to be done by, I think it was May. And uh, so she stayed, she stayed with it and made it happen. So credit to Shims. And as you can see, she also is wearing one of our electric spray and the gas shirts, uh, which is our favorite uniform here. Um, anything you want to add to that, Amy, at all before I move on? I think you're doing great. Okay. So uh, we talked about this a little bit, Joel. This, is, this maybe makes sense a little bit, but charging events, this is one of Carl's favorite uh, quotes is, um, you know, they're not created equal. There's right sizing faster is be versus faster is better. So faster isn't always better. Uh, and so what we're talking about with the whole trickle charge, um, um, the whole trickle charge idea and how it'll affect the grid. For us, it, it kind of is, yeah, if we had uh, level one being used at home, if that's, if that, if you're able to do that, it's probably better for the grid in the long term. But it, 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 it isn't always faster is better. So we wanna make sure that people that are using the fast chargers are using them because they need to for, and they get on them and get off of them, especially like at the airport and electric drive and things like that. So um, we'll get right to our programs here since uh, we're in the middle of this. Uh, as you all know, this is exciting news. This Cap, Cap Metro is adding electric buses uh, in, in two weeks, October 16th, I believe, Amy, that we're gonna have a big, press release, a media event uh, with, I think Jackie's gonna speak and, and I think maybe the mayor's gonna speak, I'm not sure, but 
uh, be, be sure to look out for that. Um, but the, the, uh, the depot that they've created up north to, to be able to charge these buses, kind of a bus electric depot, is going to uh, have its grand opening on October 16th. Uh, so you should see uh, more electric buses in the future. And so that, and that's uh, Cameron Freeberg on our team has been working on that project. Uh, so even though it's a cap Metro, uh, you know, it's their fleet uh, and transportation works with us quite a bit, but a cap Metro works with us quite a bit to just to make sure they get the right infra charging infrastructure in place and, and, um, and the right transformers and things like that to be able to, to take care of these buses. Um, I'll skip the, the, uh, this, uh, Oh, the fleet rollout. Yeah, the fleet rollout's right on plan. Uh, it's been going great. Um, we're we're the, saving the city like 3.5 million, as you can tell, over 10 years. So uh, it's a matter of time. As a what happens is you can't just replace a car. You know, obviously we can't just go spend taxpayers' money or people's money to replace a car until it's expired. So after it it, it goes through all of its uh, rotations, which is I think around. I'm not sure. It depends on the car, but uh, we'll, we'll start replacing them with electric vehicles. So this is something we're really excited about. And it's a mandate from this, from, uh, from city and city council. So, uh, we're excited about that. You might recognize this cool guy. Um, <laughs> but he was one of our first, uh, EV 360 time of use people. And, and, uh, we created a white paper that's available online. Uh, I wanted to add this to this conversation today because I know some of you may be interested in going and look reading it, but it's uh, it's been well received uh, in the EV world. And uh, Lindsay um, McDougal, who's on our team, who manages this pro program and this project, wrote this white paper, uh, and it's really good, really good information. Uh, she's already gone to several conferences and spoke on it, so definitely check it out. Uh, if you go to our website, you should be able to find a link to it. Uh, if, but if you don't, for some reason, by all means, just email me and I'll, I'll get that information to y'all. And then I'll let uh, Amy speak up on this. These are some of the programs that we're working on with the community. Yeah, um, thank you, Bobby. Um, so I head up a program called EVs Are For Everyone, um, which is to bring um, uh, electric vehicle deployment with programs, outreach, and um, community development um, with this technology. Um, my role started out originally here at the utility grant funded from the 11th Hour Project, um, which is part of the Schmidt Family Foundation. Their goals are around um, social and environmental justice, um, and the two are really, um, you know, inextricably connected um, to um, access um, to technologies and to uh, quality of life for all people. So. This is really sort of the foundation of my work. Um, we've done hundreds of e-bike demos. As you can see, there's Maria. She's an Austin resident mother of two. She participated in an e-bike um, demo that we had um, for our low-income customers. And um, it was at uh, Navarro, which used to be Lanier High School. And um, you can just see how, if you look at her face, how happy she is. She kind of had a light bulb moment. Most people, when they were taking a ride on the e-bikes, you know, they'd take it around a couple of times and get off. That was wonderful. I never, you know, had, knew it was going to be like that. And people start to formulate sort of what kind of uh, transportation needs can be met by these uh, electric bikes if they have access to it. Well, Maria went around and around and around and around the track with her two kids and in the cargo bucket and they had such fun and she came back and she really figured out, you know, if I had access to this, I can get my kids to school and then I can go to the store. And it sounds like a simple thing. Um, but for Maria, she doesn't have reliable transportation and that's like a life changing opportunity. So we, we do a lot of work um, with the community to bring micro mobility um, to um, people. Uh, we're working with um, actually, actually a project with um, our local bike share, which is going electric. Um, and we're, we're working to put um, these docking stations in affordable housing. We're going to be doing a big safety training. It's also um, a combination effort with um, CAP Metro and Austin Transportation. Um, it's a collaboration that we're leading um, that's going to um, bring the safety uh, training and help people with like first, first last mile solutions, connectivity to our bus routes, which Bobby showed you on the other slide that the electric buses that are going to be in Austin. Um, Bobby, did you mention the fact that 
the buses were, um, that Cat Metro announced last year at um, Earth Day that there will be no more um, buses purchased that are not electric. So it's just really exciting news. And, and we're looking at ways to, again, reach with shared electric and autonomous um, uh, technology. Um, the other big program you might have heard about, and it's really cool because it's taking off across the country. There's other, other schools and, and school districts and other cities that are replicating our program. It's called EVs um, for Schools, and it is combining electric vehicle charging with EV curriculum at public school campuses. Um, our target um, was to um, deploy at schools that serve a measurable amount of economically disadvantaged students because we know they don't have the resources that more of the affluent schools do. Um, we also made a requirement that we had at least one um, school community member um, that drives electric and that actually wasn't that hard. There are several teachers in AISD that drive electric. They drive used electric vehicles and so they wanted workplace charging. So we created with this program essentially an educational living lab where the students are seeing their heroes, the teachers plugging in, then they're getting the curriculum and it becomes a part of their culture. And so this is where we begin to sort of make this the norm, you know, and it, and it really is shifting minds and behaviors. Um, and it's building trust in our community. And that's really the foundation of EVs are for everyone. Trying to change the slide. Oh, there we go. Um, uh, on, on, a, on a side note, with Amy was talking about the EVs for schools. Uh, one of the things that you guys, I uh, will share with you all is that uh, Aaron was saying to kind of share some just kind of stuff that we do on a regular basis, uh, just so you kind of know what goes into some of the things that we work on. But uh, during this COVID crisis and everybody working from home throughout the country uh, and throughout the world, basically, uh, we have talked to so many uh, cities and, and, and districts and, and communities, uh, you know, throughout the throughout the world about our programs and what's going on. So, so for instance, in in Arizona, they're trying to start a uh, an EV program from the ground up. In other words, they just, they're just beginning the process. And so, you know, we spend an hour or two with them on the phone and, and share some information and, and give them some resources. Um, now, and, and some people ask, well, you know, what, why do you, why do you spend some of your time on that? Well, you know, Austin energy and Austin, I'm sorry, Austin, the city of Austin, uh, you know, we act, uh, in a manner for our community, right? We try to improve the environment, uh, in, 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 uh, in our community, but as you all know, It'll be great if we become uh, net zero emissions by 2050 for, for our little space, but it, it, it won't be enough for the world, right? And so we have to, we have to help other people uh, become net zero emissions by, by whenever they can. And, and so uh, the sooner the better. And so for us to be able to help out other communities get started, it's part of what uh, we have a responsibility for and our team feels like they have a responsibility for. So, it's kind of cool to, to, to have conversations with these communities. Um, and I'll share another, another secret with y'all toward the end of this, uh, during, during the end of this presentation. But uh, real quickly to go over this buyer's guide. I don't know if you guys have been online and looked at our buyer's guide, but about two years ago, Bloomberg uh, challenged 25 cities uh, to reduce greenhouse gas emissions in, uh, within a two year period. And, uh, 25 cities were chosen and Austin was one of them. And there's about six different things that go on uh, with that. But uh, Austin Energy was tasked and an electric vehicle uh, with, a team was tasked with uh, trying to come up with a way to help the auto dealerships uh, not turn people away from EVs, not try to, to dis discourage them from buying an EVs, which we all hear about happens on a regular basis. So we created this this better customer experience from start to finish. And we just launched it in, in October of last year uh, with the, we had this big kickoff event with the mayor and about 30 different auto dealerships came in and we launched this program. And the program I just wanna share with you real quick is it's kind of three phases, but the first phase is the buyer's guide. So we wanted to, we wanted, and this is something please share with, with, with people that are interested in buying a vehicle. 
this is very Austin specific. Uh, the dealerships are local dealerships that are on this site. And these are actual vehicles for sale in Austin. And so it's a buyer's guide that, that kind of helps with facts and myths. It helps with where to charge, how long it takes me to charge. It gives them all that information. So they have some information before they get to the dealership now. They're educated enough to go to the dealership and ask certain questions at the dealership. And also, uh, we have phase two of this buyer's guide that's going to be launched in the next probably three or four weeks that Amy and I have been working on. The, the phase two of the buyer's guide is going to be uh, awesome. It's going to actually show real-time data every day will be updated. The dealerships that are, that are interested in selling EVs in our community, what they have on their, on their uh, lot for sale you know, price, color, you know, uh, how, you know, whether it's new or used, they'll have used vehicles. So you can go now, you can go look, oh, I'm interested in the EV. I want one that's $20,000 or less. So now you'll see cars come up on this buyer's guide that are for sale in Austin, less than $20,000 that could be at the town North Nissan, or that could be at the, the BMW South, or it could be at the Capital Chevrolet, uh, Auto Nation. All these folks are interested in, in being on the buyer's guide. And so we're super excited about this. We think this is a key to uh, helping the mass, or the, 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 the whole com the community as a whole, uh, not the early adopters, but the mainstream people that are just now getting interested in EV. So we're excited about that. Phase two of that, all right, the other part of this, and this is what it looks like if you go to the buyer's guide. Uh, and it, you can go to pluginawesome.com and, and, and there's a link to it, but it also has its own URL as well. Um, and then at the dealerships, the other part of this was the dealerships now have these kiosks. These kiosks are about six feet tall, but as you can see uh, on, the, on, the, uh, on the screen there, when they're showing it, it's on the auto dealership showroom floor. It sits next to an EV that they're selling. And so when somebody comes in and they test drive and they think about an EV, now you have a, a, a salesperson with knowledge and they're not just kind of sitting there I'm not sure what to, how to answer this. They can just go to this kiosk and kind of scroll on this kiosk and it shows them where the charging stations are in Austin. How can I get, if I, if I want to take a trip to Nashville, can I get there in this car? And it'll show them how they map, you know, show all the charging stations all the way to Nashville and back. It'll show them how much energy that they'll use at their house and what their cost estimates will be because it's specifically related to Austin uh, energy and our cost and what it will cost the customer. So, all these things are tools to help sell that vehicle easier and make that customer experience better. Uh, another exciting thing about this tool that sits there on the showroom floor is you guys know that there's a lot of turnover in the auto dealership world. Um, I have some friends that work in the auto dealership world and, and, uh, and they tell me about the turnover and stuff. Well, uh, now you have a tool that's there 24 hours a day. So when that salesperson is new and they're sitting at their desk, and they're learning about cars that are for sale on that lot, they can go to this, um, this beacon, this, this uh, kiosk, and learn about EVs. And, and, and then they have the answers for when those people come in. So this is a great, this is a great tool. And this is something we're going to help market heavily the buyer's guide in the, in the coming months. Any questions on that, Amy? This is the, the kickoff event. And this is, these are the ads that you'll see on digital advertisement. Uh, if you're online, you know, say hello to the new buyer's guide. Come check out the buyer's guide. You all know Stevie, the EV loving T-Rex will, will has something to say about it. Uh, Let's just reiterate the website. I did drop that in the chat. It's ev.austinenergy.com. And also just um, for clarity, the, the used EV piece is going to be launched later this fall. So I definitely encourage you to get onto that uh, website. It's fun. And it's kind of unlike anything that we've had access to um, in our local community here ever online. So we're pretty excited about it. Um, and so I know we're running out of time. We want to chat a bit. Um, so you, got, you all know about our marketing efforts. Um, so I won't go into too much detail on that. You see that with electric greater than gas. Uh, Stevie, the EV11 T-Rex, uh, is has, has made several appearances even during COVID uh, at different uh, the Energy Thought Summit last week. Stevie was there. Uh, Stevie was on a on a um, on a uh, webinar this weekend with Amy. 
Uh, and so CV is still going to have a strong presence. Uh, I'm going to give you a little bit of the secret information because you're, you're in our group. And, and since this is, this is being recorded, I guess it'll be permanent uh, information for everybody, but I'll give it to you anyway. Uh, we were contacted by another city that loves uh, what we're doing marketing wise. And they are going to uh, replicate our Stevie's going to have a new, no, I'm sorry, Stevie's cousin from another city is going to uh, start to promote uh, electrification of transportation in this city. And it's a major city. Uh, you guys will be pleasantly surprised. We think it's going to be a lot of fun um, because we think it's going to help, you know, Stevie, the EV11 T-Rex, the, the, uh, the, the uh, T-Rex dyno, fossil fuels are dead, right? And we can, we can truly, make, maybe this could be the mascot of all the communities. Uh, but the, this, uh, this city is going to come out with a campaign and we'll share it with you guys when it comes out. So I, that, that's all the information I'll give you right now. But it's kind of cool. They, they love what we're doing in Austin and wanted, they wanted to do it in their own community. Stevie has officially gone viral. <laughs> uh, yeah, we might do a dance off uh, with this other city soon. Stevie, the, uh, the shuffle. Um, Y'all know about Stevie being everywhere. Is there any other questions? You guys, this is, uh, you know, uh, you know, we're proud of the stuff that we do here, but we're, we're far from finished. Uh, but we won several awards over the last several years. Uh, and it's good, it's good to be recognized. Uh, but we, we want to do more. So we're not, we're not satisfied by any means. Uh, this is our team. You guys recognize most of them. Cameron, uh, myself, uh, Lindsay's there, Carl, Amy. Uh, and so, and then we have Caitlin and, and Nathan. And, and so uh, anytime y'all need us for anything, you can just email any of us. Uh, it's all, always our first name, dot last name at austinenergy.com. So mine would be bobby.godsey at austinenergy.com. And Amy would be Amy dot actually at austinenergy.com but carl pop dot pop at austinenergy.com so any of us can be reached that way uh and we we, we love to get y'all's input all the time you're, you're helping us create uh these these uh, these great programs that we're doing today so i'll leave it there amy you want to add, add anything and, and we'll take any yeah. questions yeah, I want to address a question that came up um, on the chat. Um, someone was asking about um, buses, school buses, and we are working on it. It's something I've been working on actually for the last three years, and we're getting closer and closer. We have um, the buy-in from AISD to they want to do a pilot. Um, and so our role has really been helping identify funding to help support that. and. The pilot will most likely be three electric buses, three to four electric buses, and we'll help them out with figuring out the infrastructure needed to uh, support that. Um, so it's it's very exciting. It, we're just kind of on the tip of it. We, we haven't received the funding, but I've been working with the TCEQ and they've been very helpful to identify, you know, what it is that we can um, zero in on in terms of what makes them eligible. There's really a lot of complexities involved because they have uh, AISD, for example, and the reason why I point out ASD instead of other school districts, I, I reach out to other school districts all the time. There is some interest, but no one is really ready to jump on. Um, so um, AISD has a sustainability team and sustainability um, goals, climate impact goals. So it fits with their core uh, goals and um, strategic plans for their district. Um, and bus uh, electrification is on that and it, and it is coming um, as soon as we can uh, make that happen, we will. And, and you guys will probably be you know, among the first to hear about it. Um, but we're pretty, we're pretty excited about it. We understand that um, you know, the, uh, that big plume of smoke that goes behind those diesel buses is really quite dangerous for the students that are waiting to be picked up or getting on. And once they get on that, if there's not a great AC system that that um, those emissions go right into the bus and the kids breathe that. So it really is about health and wellness, which is a foundation of everything that we do. So um, stay tuned for that. Amy, while, while we have you um, related to that, I noticed another question related to police cruisers. Have you guys had any conversations with the city of Austin police by any chance? Yeah. Um, Bobby, you know, I don't know the exact details on it, so I'm, I guess I'm not qualified to answer, but I know there's something on it. Bobby, do you know? 
Um, I, I'm not qualified to answer that one either. Uh, that would be Cameron Freeberg on our team. There is, um, so Cameron works uh, a lot with the different departments like the fleet program. The, the police uh, department, uh, there, there is talks. I would leave, I'll leave it at that for now. It's, it's kind of too early. Uh, you know, there's a lot of things going on with the police department. You know, we, as you all know, that, that that's um, causing, you know, tension everywhere, right? And, and so, uh, but on those good days, the, the conversations about electrifying their fleet, uh, but it just has to be the right car, which you guys know that, that not every car will work with the, with the police cruisers. So it has to be uh, fit the needs and, and, and it has to be affordability. And right now, if they were to do something with, with, the, with the budget being cut and things like that that have happened recently, it's been a little bit paused. So I'll just leave it at that right now for now. Yeah, I mean, I will add, though, I mean, it is part of the conversation. I think that's an interesting yeah. question, uh, whoever asked it. But I, I will sure. say that um, we do have um, some of APD on electric bikes. Um, and we also do have, you know, our city fleet here in Austin, we're transitioning um, the city fleet. We want to lead by example. So we're transitioning our vehicles to electric. Um, we're, we're um, initial goal is to reach uh, and replace 330 vehicles and we've already deployed over the first hundred. Some of those are going to APD, those that are not the, the cruisers, um, but they do need vehicles for things as well. But it is, I mean, it's on the radar. So I think we'll, we will see it. Hey, I have a question. Um, and I, first of all, I just want to really thank you for doing this today and for all the work you've been doing. And I'm really proud of Austin and so my question is kind of like, I want to hear a little more about intercity travel. As you know, part of the equation of, you know, what, what EV should I buy is how, what are my needs? And I, I've been driving a Leaf for, you know, six or seven years and leasing it. Uh, I'm now at the point where I want a car that uh, I can drive to Dallas or I can drive to Galveston. And uh, I wanted to get your thoughts about uh, the manufacturers that have their own charging networks, like, you know, Tesla that everyone knows about, but VW just announced a car and they've, they've got Electrify America. Um, are there, uh, are there reciprocal agreements or are there sort of ways that we can feel more confident about, you know, either not worrying about which car we buy as long as, you know, it has a minimal amount of range or, you know, getting the best car that will take us, you know, to, to another city. I wish all cities were as great as Austin. Um, uh, and I know we're getting there, but I, I want to get your thoughts more about the inner city uh, part of the equation. No, I think it's a great, um, it's a great discussion. And, um, you know, we, we do, as Bobby mentioned, work with other cities. Um, I was just on the National Drive Electric Week national event, and there were a bunch of Texans on there, and, and um, Evolve was on there from Houston, um, Dallas, Fort Worth, people. I think everybody's working towards it. It is a part of the conversation, um, and it's just not going to, we're not going to see the uh, adoption that we want to see accelerate until that happens, and, um, you know, I think one of the things that that might be helpful is we do have this uh, technology that Bobby mentioned called Chargeway, which is a trip planner that can help you if you're if you want to go to Galveston, you can plug in uh, basically your trip, and it will tell you all this charging that's available to you on the way. Mm -hmm. Now a lot of that is not going to be right off the the interstate corridor, which TCEQ is really trying to lead that deployment, um, but um, it is doable, and I think. Aaron was just on here and maybe you'd like to comment about your trip to Maine and your Tesla and how that worked out for you. Yeah, I could briefly say that, um, you know, when preparing for our trip to Maine, um, I was looking for um, the superchargers along the way, but also identifying kind of backup plan for um, if I'm not able to get to a supercharger. Um, and so I was pleasantly surprised to find that ChargePoint and Electrify America have announced that they're they are actually doing reciprocal charging. So um, when, when you are, have the appropriate plugs and, and a membership in either of those, then, then you will be able to charge at either um, charging stations as, as you're going forward. Now with uh, the Tesla, you have to have a Chadmo adapter or, you know, 
fingers crossed someday the the other adapter um, but um, that's that's a great that's great news because that increases the number of charging stations that are available for people as they're trying to drive cool. yeah good question uh, I'll, I'll just add to that too uh, Ron, I, I agree you know, I think the car is at the right spot where you could get one that, you know, you feel confident, whether it be a Bolt or, or a new Nissan that's coming out, I think it's gonna have a 210 mile range or something. Uh, the cars are, are in that sweet spot to get you from, from, from one city to the next. Uh, we hope to see better improvement as far as uh, cross um, workings with like ChargePoint and different you know, your EV goes and all this other stuff and making it an easy transition with drivers. And I think they're working on some of that, uh, whether it be an app that you can just swipe and it just charges whatever account that you have. Um, so there's, those things are being worked on. Um, and then also I think, I think Electrify America is doing a good job with the funding that they've gotten from, uh, you know, the whole uh, Volkswagen settlement. If you look at the mapping that, that, that's already been done and what's coming, what's coming up, they're, they're, they're hitting, they're hitting all the major corridors. It's, it's going to be easier to get from point A to point B in the, in the next year or so. So I, I feel confident if I were you, Brian, I'd get that car right now. All right. Thank you. <laughs> I get a hat too. Yeah. So, I need the hat, the hat first. Yeah. yeah Y'all have to email me your addresses or, or I don't yeah. know how we can do that, Aaron. We can set something up where they can give me their addresses. I'll get you. I'll follow up with them and grab their addresses for you. Okay. Excellent. Okay. Thank you. Uh, any other questions? We keep, we keep getting questions in the chat about, um, you know, a little bit more about who Stevie is. Who's so inside Stevie? So Stevie is, you know, a thought leader, a scientist with millions of years of experience and a team member, um, an influencer. So as far as beyond that, I can say no more. <laughs> Does that, ask them, does that answer the question? Is that, that, that all they needed? That's what they're gonna get. <laughs> uh, Stevie is, Stevie's smart. Stevie's been around quite a while. Go look at the videos. You'll, you'll learn more about Stevie in the videos. And, and look, at the video, look at the videos at pluginaustin.com or on the buyer's guide. Go check out the buyer's guide for sure. But EV, uh, Stevie's videos are on there. And if you look closely, you may see other people you recognize. We'll just leave it at that. <laughs> All right, well with that, I'm gonna acknowledge that we're at the end of our time and I really wanna say that we appreciate your spending your time with us and you know, identifying how it is that, that what you're doing locally is, is really changing, not only what's happening here in Austin, but also across the country. It's great to see what you guys are doing. Um, from the Austin EV side of things, I wanted to make sure that I mentioned that this is the first of several um, events that we have planned over this week. So please, if you go to austinev.org, you can um, RSVP for any of the sessions that we have planned. Um, and that's also where you might choose to join the Electric Auto Association. Um, it's a small fee and it supports the national efforts um, in supporting the chapters like us here in Austin EV. So, with that, I'm going to turn off the recording and thank you very much, everybody. We appreciate your time.